today morning I took your first session and fortunately I am taking your last session also. Uh, now I am taking Android components. As Nilesh has shown you the basic uh, components, uh, the basic uh, Android application, what is an Android application, how to run it, what are text box, what are labels. Then also I will explain it another time slowly. So if you are not able to, if you not were able to follow at that time, you can follow now. Uh, what all I will be covering in Android components? Basically, there are four types of components. First is activities, second services, third uh, broadcast receivers, and fourth is content providers. We will be seeing one by one the how to implement it programmatically as well as uh, application component. As I said, there are four types of application components. First is activities. What does activity mean? It is a visual user interface focused on a single thing a user can do. Uh, services. Uh, unlike activities, a service does not have an user interface. It means that a user can't see in front of his screen. Services, they run in the background. Third is broadcast receivers. Uh, broadcast receivers receive and react to broadcast announcement. The fourth is content providers. It allows the data exchange between applications. Now I am going in detail. What is an activity? What is an activity? An activity means a single screen with a user interface. Uh, an application usually consists of multiple activities that are loosely bound to each other. An activity generally provides a user with an interactive screen to do something like dialing the phone, viewing a map, etc. Uh, every screen in an application is an activity by itself. Suppose in any of the Android phone, what you see in front of you is itself an activity. What you push, uh, what you press another button, it indirectly is an activity by itself. Uh, let's take an example of an activity. Uh, let's take an example of an email application. An email application might have one activity that shows a list of new email. We can have an another activity that shows to read an email. Although the activities work together to form a user interface in the email application, each one is independent of the others, means all the activities are not connected to each other. For example, uh, if we have a camera application, uh, camera application can start the activity in the email application if we want to compose a new mail. Uh, suppose if the user want to share a picture. Uh, then he can do it. Intents. Uh, what are intents? Intents would be used in the uh, programs that I would be showing you. So what is an intent? Intents are used as a message passing mechanism that works both within an application and between the application. Uh, there are two types of intents. The first is implicit as well as second is explicit. Uh, let's talk about intent, uh, implicit intent. Implicit does not specify a component, a component. Instead, it includes enough information for the system to determine which of the available component is best to run it. Uh, look, just look at a code snippet. There is one object created by intent, and in the U URI, we are passing the address of Google. And in the final line, we are starting an activity by passing web intent as an argument. This means that on click of it, we will be redirected to the Google website. Uh, some examples of implicit uh, intents are uh, launching a Google map, opening a SMS application, or uh, like we do in everyday life, making a con call. Uh, making a call is also an implicit intent. So what is an explicit intent? Explicit intents uh, specifically defines the component which should be called by the Android system. 
suppose we are in one application and we want to call another applications class that we can do it with the help of explicit intent. Uh, the code snippet is as follows, intent th the same thing but we are specifying the name of the class in the argument and that to class file and last we are starting an activity. Some of the examples of explicit intents are to start an activity or service to perform an ac action or to broadcast that an event has occurred. About the broca broadcast I will talk you later but, but just uh, know. Now we will look at the program demo. I have written the program uh, before only I am just showing it. First of all let me show what the output would be like. What is the output of the program so that you can know what the program does. Now I am running the program by cl right clicking on the project and running as run as android application. This is the emulator. This is, the, this is the application and uh, it uh, that is one label two labels which is written activity one and the second is enter your name and there is one text box and one button. The name of the class file is uh, main activity we are in the main activity. Again I am repeating we are we are having two labels one is activity one and the second label is enter your name and there is one text box. Uh, corresponding to it and a single button. So, in the text box I would be writing some name and clicking on submit. I am writing Akash and clicking on submit. Uh, what it does like we now we are in activity 2 that is one label welcome and Akash whatever we have written in the Na, uh, text box that name is transferred to another activity through intents. I click on back and, ab and again I am redirected to the first activity. This means that like through intents intent we can move between the activities. Now I will show the coding part. Uh, these are the two files main activity as well as screen 2. As a, uh, and their corresponding XML file. XML file contains the design part and main activity and screen 2 contains the logic part. I click on main activity dot java. Uh, I have declared two button uh, a single button and an edit text. I have an important method add listener on button whatever uh, if a user clicks on the button this full block of code, uh, code would be executed. Uh, so on the click of the button on click listener the following three lines of code would be executed. What does this three line indicate? As you have seen I have mentioned in the a PPT like I have used intent. So, that intent I am using here. As you know that explicit intent is used to call the internal class files. So, I am using here an explicit intent. Uh, in the intent I am passing screen 2 dot class as an argument. So, whenever this line executes screen 2 dot class we are redirected to intent dot put extra means whatever we have entered in the text that text is uh, given to the activity number 2. So, that we can receive the message activity 1 passes the value to activity 2 and finally, we are starting the activity passing. Uh, intent as an argument. Now, 
Now, just look at screen 2 that is activity 2. Uh, in activity 1, we have sent a message and activity 2 should receive the message. Uh, here, I have uh, declared a title message and button. Uh, title gets the screen, uh, gets the message from the activity 1 and message just displays the uh, the, the message which we got from activity just to display in activity 2. So, title gets the message and message prints the message, message label. So, in the back button also as you know I have declared one another button in activity 2 that button I am redirecting again to main activity it means it uh, functions like a back button. So, I am like navigating between one activity to the second activity and then second activity to the first activity and in that I am declaring main activity dot class and finally, start activity passing intent as an object. This line is used for opening a new activity. Again I am running the program so that you would be clear run as right click android application. Here it is the emulator takes some time first time to start it we are in currently in activity 1 I am entering the name Akash android and clicking on submit button. On the click of submit button I am re redirected to activity 2 and with an welcome visit Akash android Akash android that which I have entered in the previous activity. On click of back I am again redirected to activity 1 with a null uh, with a blank screen. So, you would have now understand what is the mean of activity jumping between one activity to another activity and any number of activity just you should call intent internally there to explicit intent juggling between the uh, main screen in. So, that is all for uh, activity now I am going to tell about services what are services services also an important android component. Uh, what is service a task that runs in the background without the users direct interaction means it means that the user does not need anything to worry about the task runs in the background no worry about that. A service does not have a user interface means unlike an activity it does not have a screen uh, a service by default runs in the main thread of the application that houses means it runs in the that houses. Some of the main uh, good examples of services are network downloads. The second is playing music. The third is checking updates for an application. Uh, a service can run in the background to perform work even while the user is not in a different application. Uh, we can assume that a service does not require any user interface like it just runs in the background no need to worry uh, what the user does or does not do it will itself run it. Uh, a service might play in the music in the background while the user is in different application like if the user wants to hear to music and want to message. So, like the music would, would be playing in the background. So, this is the best example of services checking updates for an application it may happen that on click, uh, click uh, on when the internet is there and, and if uh, a new app a new update for an app is launched then it prompts us to download it. So, this is an example also of a service. Now, we look at the demo program demo of services how services work and what are the code required. Uh, I have a program named service launcher I am right clicking it and running as android application. This is the emulator I am writing uh, the output would 
we shown here. Uh, here it is and uh, there is one label which states that an application showing the use of the services. There are two buttons start button as well as stop button. On clicking of start button a message would be displayed in the bottom stating that uh, service has been started and the counter would be at 0. Obviously, when we start a service the initial value be should be from 0. On clicking of stop service another message would be highlighted here stating that the service has been stopped and the counter would be at some positive number. At last it also says that how much time the service was running in the background. So, between the start as well as stop service an icon would be uh, a label would be placed on the notification bar stating that the service has been started. So, I click on start service a, a message has been uh, displayed stating that a service created at this much time and counter is at 0. Now, as you look up a label has been added in the top bar notification bar as I pull down it a label is visible service label with an android logo in it. I push up there means the service has been started and is running in the background. Now, I browse some other features of the phone, but still the notification bar is there and service is also running. I just randomly enter some number just now I clicked on call button and I am randomly clicking some numbers. During the clicking of the number the service is still running in the background as you can see the logo. If I want to stop it I pull down on click and click on service label. As I click on service label I will be again redirected to the service notification main activity and I click on stop service. Uh, as soon as I click on stop service a message is displayed stating that a service destroyed and the counter is at 78 and in the last message service running for 77 seconds. It means that during the browsing whatever I did the service was running in the background. Now, I am stopping the service and the service has been stopped. So, the upper upper icon android icon has disappeared. Now, no longer the service is running. Now, let us look at the code. This is our code two main methods uh, two main class notify service and service launcher. Uh, let us look at service launcher. I have declared two buttons that you have seen in the main screen start as well as stop. On clicking of start service start button this particular line of code would be implemented here. Here also I am using explicit intent. In activity also I have used explicit intent means we are going to another class. In stop or service also I am using an explicit intent and here also I am going to the main class. The main class means that we are having two buttons that is a main class. Now notify service here the logic is there uh, I have de declared notification manager nm object a timer and couple of two timestamp to know the difference between the start service and stop service. Uh, after that 
I have a timestamp. In timestamp, I am storing the system current time in milliseconds. And toast. What does toast mean? Toast means just displaying a message on the screen. And displaying a message on the screen stating that a service has been created at this time and counter is at 0. And at the start of the service, the counter would be at 0. Two main methods are that show notification and increment notification. In show notification, I have commented all the lines. It is also self-explanatory. Let me read in. I am um, in this particular line. We will be using the same text for the ticker and the expanded notification. You have seen that what I dragged down. This line is used for that. And pending intent. Uh, I will be explaining pending intent in another program because in that it is the major part is that and increment counter. Uh, I am having a timer which checks every second whether the service is running or not. On destroy, on destroy if the user clicks on another uh, stop button it goes on on destroy and in that I display a message stating the service has been destroyed getting the counter to some positive integer number. At last another message stating the service running for and difference of the time. The difference is being calculated between the timestamp. In one timestamp I am storing the system dot current time in milliseconds and taking the difference of both. Now again you would be clear what the program is doing. Just have an another look of the output of the code. Right click run as android application. Sorry the emulator has already been opened. So there is a warning stating that activity not started its current task has been there. So I just click on the emulator in the sidebar and, uh, and it opens. I click on start service, it states the service created, counter is at 0, icon has been added, I pull it down and I browse any other thing in the phone emulator. Then I pull down, click on service label and I click on stop service, service destroyed and the counter is at 23 service running for 22 seconds. So you would be clear what the service is like. The third component is Android broadcast receivers. What is a broadcast receiver? Broadcast means saying yeah I am available for update. Some system says like if you have a Android phone if the battery is low there would be a message stating that battery is low please connect it to recharge. Means it is telling the message to all the applications. Uh, a broadcast receiver is a component that responds to the system wide broadcast announcements. Many broadcast originate from the system itself. For example, the screen has been turned off, the battery is low or a picture has been captured or an SMS is received. Uh, applications, internal applications can also initiate broadcast. For example, to let other application know that, that some data has been downloaded to the device and is available for them to use. Like if we install some application from Google Play, if we install some games, after downloading of the game it says that your game has been downloaded, you are, you can play. It is also some, uh, it is also one of the kind of broadcast receivers. Uh, it creates a status bar up notification to alert the user when a broadcast event occurs. Uh, means that I, as I shown in the top, uh, in the top of the emulator a uh, label has been added. It shows that it alerts the user that a broadcast event has occurred. Uh, an example would be that although broadcast receivers do not display a user interface just like a service, it does not uh, indicate any user interface UI. 
they may create a status notification to alert the user when the broadcast event occurs. Uh, broadcast receivers are also activated by intents. But here we will not be using implicit in intent, explicit intent, we will be using implicit intents. Now we will be looking at the program code. This is our program code. First of all, let me run the program. Right click, run as Android application. The emulator has started. Now here we have a two button send notification and cancel notification. Send notification sends a notification to all to all the application that it has some message to tell. Cancel notification tells that uh, cancel notification we are cancelling it. As I click on uh, send notification, a, uh, a new label is added and uh, as I roll it down a label is there stating notification details browse Android official site by clicking me and on clicking of it I, I would be redirected to the Android official site. Uh, cat should be taken that your uh, PC is connected to the internet otherwise uh, page not found would be there. When I cancel notification this above uh, label would disappear. I click on cancel and at the same time the label has disappeared. Now let us look at the code. There is only one file simple notification dot java. I have declared two button start as well as cancel. Uh, this is the main code on clicking or start button the following code would be executed. Here new thing used is pending intent and here Another new thing is that we are using implicit intent. In the previous two examples, we have been using explicit intent to juggle between activities. Now, we want to go beyond activities and fetch some other data from the uh, go to some other website in the internet. So, for this, we are using intent that to implicit intent, and inside the argument, we are giving the URI of the website. Here I have given android.com slash about. Uh, another thing is pending intent. What is a pending intent? A pending intent is a token that you can give to any foreign application like alarm manager, notification manager, etcetera, which allows the application foreign third foreign or third party application to use our application permission to execute a predefined piece of code. See as you looked at we have used here implicit intent. The previous two examples we have explained I have we have used explicit. the cancel button I am cancelling the notification notification manager dot cancel and again as you again I am running the code right click run as application I click on sent notification a new alert click me a label has been added I pull down uh, then I click on cancel notification 
as I pull down a label is there notification details I click on it and I am again redirected to android.com slash about. If you are doing this in your college make sure that your college does not have any proxy settings if at all your college has proxy settings you should provide the proxy settings in the emulator it, it is taking some time yeah here it is here we have open www.android.com slash about about so you would have now get the uh, got the difference between an implicit as well as explicit intent uh, explicit uh, explicit starts an activity using his class name while implicit makes a call to another third to another third party like fetching a website through internet uh, explicit does not require any internet connection, but implicit intents do require. So, make sure you are connected to the internet, otherwise, you will be uh, welcomed with the message paid not found. Now, the final component is content providers. What is a content providers? It is a shared set of data, it makes some of the application data available to another application it is the only way to transfer data between applications in android uh, unlike the other other applic uh, other OS like in a, any other language it does not have any shared files it does not have any shared memory or pipes etc. Uh, these all things are used to transfer message or data in other languages. So, like in android there is only one method to get data or send data that are content providers. Uh, a content through the content providers other application can query or even modify the data. We should make sure the content provider allows it to do. We should have the required permissions in the XML file. For let us take an example. Uh, for example, the Android system provides a content provider that manages the user's contact information. Uh, typically, a provider is backed by an SQLite database. SQLite database in an open source database which is embedded inside an Android. Uh, Let us take an example uh, stating that we have an our own application named App1. Uh, we have another application App2 which uses an internal database of contact information. So, if the app 1 wants to take some data from the app 2, it requires an content provider. So, it is a bridge between a single application to another application for getting the data. The best example is like on our Android phones, we would be having the contact information. Suppose that contact information we want to use in another application inbuilt our own application we would be using content providers. Uh, the practical part of content providers will be given tomorrow. So, I am like you should be clear about all the three building blocks. 